Hello, and thank you for listening. My name is Luke Mardigan, and you are listening to Be Insured, where we talk about business, leadership, and insurance that way. On your worst day, when you need it the most, you will be, be insured. insured. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to tell you about a phenomenal resource we created just for our listeners. We did a show on time blocking, how to take control of your schedule, take it back from your employees and your clients, and start getting stuff done. And it's called a time block template. And all you have to do is go to beinsuredonline.com backslash time block. That's beinsuredonline.com backslash time block. And you'll get Eric and I's exact time block that we use to build an insurance agency from zero to four million in under five years. Speaking of an insurance agency, let's talk about building our team. Building a great team is the most essential part of scaling your business. But that doesn't mean it's not difficult, costly, and scary if you've never done it before. As I've built my team over these past few years, I've definitely made mistakes and I've had to learn some lessons the hard way. But that's only led me to create an in-depth hiring process that gives you my best, gets me my best shot at bringing on rock star employees and weeding out the people who are just not a great fit. And that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you the exact recipe for hiring rock stars and how we've done it. And we wanna share it with all the small business owners out there. So I'm excited about today's show and I'm joined by my co-host. Eric Gestring, The Marketing Agency. All right, let's talk about this. <laughs> Eric brought up this really, really funny story. It's ha ha ha. It's funny about how I failed as a leader, um, which is always really, really funny to talk about how other other people failed. And I hired an employee, and I made it. I declared like after a week to the entire team, "This is the best hire I have ever made." If you could see me, I'm patting myself on the back right now for making this brilliant hire. But a week later, he stopped showing up. He didn't get anything done. Um, and uh, we ended up parting ways, uh, you know, mutually agreeable that we both needed to kind of separate. But that's because our process stunk. If you're listening right now, you're probably thinking to yourself, process? I don't even have that. I just hire whoever walks in the door. If that's you, or if you just want to get better at it, we got it for you. We got some great, great tips. So let's talk about the first mistake that I made. I pretty much always... And I think I'm sure I'm the only small business owner who identifies with this. We pretty much just hired the first reasonably qualified person to walk in the door. Why is that? Because it's really hard to find good people. It takes time and effort and you have to actually like work. I just want to go do my job. I don't want to have to like interview people. <laughs> so... That's really the bottom line. So how do you correct it? Well, it's really cool. There's actually software out there that does it for you. There's a, uh, a website called wisehire.com, W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E.com. Unlike most radio shows, I do not receive money for referring you to them. Uh, I just use them and I believe in them. Wisehire.com, W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E. And what this allowed us to do with our most recent opening I was able to get 160 applicants in less than a week, just for a few hundred bucks. So great, you don't have the time, we'll spend some money, right? Outsource it. And the, that, that specific software, what it does is it brings in people and you're able to take them through kind of a sales funnel from like candidate to qualified, disqualified, phone interview, second interview, hired, disqualified. <clears throat> And you're able to go through and just very quickly go, ah, they wouldn't be a good fit, they wouldn't be a good fit, they wouldn't be a good fit, ooh, ooh, I like this person. And you have all their information, their name, their phone number, their email, so you can social media stalk them. I mean, so right away I'm getting a cursory feel for their experience, uh, their knowledge, whether they'd be a good fit or not, and I'm looking at it, I'm looking at their social media. So I'm going, you know, what do these people believe in? Is, is this the type of person I would wanna be associated with or, or my business associated with? Right away, within like 30 seconds, I already have an idea of that candidate. I think it's so cool that you brought up the social media thing because believe it or not, everybody listening, anytime you put your resume and application in to get hired, they will look at your social media. Yep. And even if it's on lockdown, you'd be surprised at how much you can get to, even if it's a closed profile. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating. And the wise hire you brought up, there's cool things about that. So I heard from people that applied for the position that we just recently posted and how they saw it on indeed.com where are all the places that this is getting broadcast do we I, even know i don't even know no i don't even know i don't even care because i got 160 applicants in a week i was able to whittle those down to about 30 people i thought were qualified those 30 people took an assessment test what's that, that what, what's the assessment test they took we talk about that mistake number three eric okay foreshadowing 
And what was cool is I was, so I went over those qualified people down to like 15 people after they took the assessment. And out of those 15 people, I offered um, phone interviews to all of them and only five of them actually scheduled the phone interview with me. So great. Those other 10 people eliminated themselves mm -hmm. from the process. That's what I want. I want to eliminate people from yeah. the process. And I got five qualified candidates and three of those five were face-to-face -face interviewing. How cool is that? So from 160 down to three, like I would hire all three if I had three. So positions. how important is face-to-face -face interviewing? Well, you know what? It's not so important that it should be the only part of your process. Historically, that's how we hired. So mistake number two for us. Mistake number one was we hired the first reasonably qualified person. Mistake number two is we hired based only on a face-to-face -face interview. And sometimes if they provided a resume, we'd use that too. Why was that the wrong move? It was the wrong move because people can, maybe I'm the only one, people can fool you. How many people do you know who have been in relationships with people, boyfriend, girlfriend type scenarios, and three months into it, they're like, that's not the person who I started dating. No, they've always been that person. They just fooled you. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's not a knock on you. It's just humankind. Um, but we we want to be accepted, and we're going to present whatever needs to be presented in order for you to want to accept me. So I don't feel rejection. Yeah, they're going to put on the best show they can, in my opinion, at an initial interview. Um, I think it's important to have what we do now. Luke didn't mention that we do a phone interview. He did briefly, but he does a phone interview on his own with these candidates and then sets up a face-to-face. -face. But what do we do now instead of just you sitting down with the candidates? Yep, so our exact process, uh, you know, the hiring the first reasonably qualified person, we just didn't have a big enough pool of applicants, right? If you live in LA and you, you're trying to find someone to date, there's millions of single people. If you live in Owasso, Michigan, there's maybe a hundred, right? So it just increases your chances of finding the right person to fit into your business. The second thing is the phone interview. The importance of the phone interview is that you're able to get a feel for them and they're able to get a feel for you. And if either of you don't like where things are going, mm -hmm. you can learn now, Hey, we're not a good fit and that's okay. And, and you know, I always give feedback. So you do the face-to-face -face interview. The important thing with the face-to-face -face is that you don't use a lot of emotion or excitement or try to sell them on the job. You just ask questions to get to know them. I have a five question interview that I do. I uh, probably should put that out as a free download. Actually, that'd be really good to give out. Um, message me at the Mardigan agency. If you want the free down, uh, I'll actually send you the exact script I use for the phone interview. Uh, and uh, again, the Mardigan agency on Facebook, you can message me and I'll just respond to you to say, uh, Hey, I want that, uh, the, your phone interview script. Super simple. None of my calls took longer than 15 minutes. After the phone interview, I sit down. We talked about the people because you're, I mean, you're like my number two in the agency here. So I'm involving another party to mm -hmm. whittle that list down and the people we think we should face to face interview with. So out of those phone interviews, we got face to face interviews. Now those are scheduled. When you sit down for the face to face meeting or your interview, two things. Number one, always bring somebody else with you. It's so common for those one-on-one -on -one interviews, you won't pick up on the things that they're saying or you'll miss something that the other person will pick up. Because you're focused on what you're asking them and exactly. certain things. Now, do you do you take notes? Because I'm pretty sure that you can touch base on taking notes in an interview. Yeah, so here's, here's, what, here's what you do. This is best practice. If you don't have job descriptions, you need to get job descriptions, first of all. Why is that important? Well, how do people know what to do? How, it's all about expectations yep. and know the expectations and if they're not meeting those expectations you have something to hold them accountable exactly to. No. hey we are all on the same page we all agree to this use the, the job description for the position you're hiring for to hire that person so you actually just go list by list so for a customer service representative it's like you know one of the roles of customer service representative is to answer phone calls and service clients give me a scenario where you've had to answer phone calls and you had a client who needed help and tell me how you helped them. And then you can go through the entire job description like that and you'll get a really good feel whether they'll do the job the way you want it done or not. That's good. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So at the end of that, um, what I used to do is just go, Oh, you seem all right. You want to work here? This is how much I'll pay you. Okay, great. Here's all the paperwork. You'll start Monday. See you later. That was literally the end of our process. We do it a little different now. Now, after the face-to-face -face interview, as long as both parties, the person being interviewed and the two people sitting in the interview, which is typically Eric and I, as long as we both all agree that we should move forward in the process, we have them take two assessments. 
What's cool is we already had one assessment because wisehire.com, you can actually request them to take the disc assessment, which I had our entire team take the disc, and I want to say we paid like $100 a test. It comes free with WiseHire. So you have them take a disc assessment, which is a personality test, and it tells you if they're a good behavioral fit and if they're a good motivational fit because those are two different things, right? Um, they might be able to do the right things, but if they don't want to do them, they're not going to do them. And that's not a be all end all. We One of the people, one of my favorite candidates actually, it says that they're a really bad behavioral fit, really great motivational fit. Well, I've interviewed her and she's going to be a great fit all the way around. Uh, yeah, you can't you can't use one certain thing to dictate everything, I think yep. is what we've learned. So th- I just use the disc as a cursory, like if it says thumbs down for both of them, well then why would I even interview them? Um, so once we actually sit down with that person, we already kind of have an idea of how they work. Mm-hmm. And then we have them take two more assessments. One is called the Colby A. You can go to Colby.com, K-O-L-B-E. That's K-O-L-B-E.com, Colby.com, and have them take the Colby A, the Colby assessment. And that tells you like your natural work style. Uh, so for me, I'm a quick start. I'm an innovator. So I could start 20 businesses today if I had the time and energy and resources because I just that's just what I do. I just get stuff, just get stuff going. Well, I don't want to hire another quick starter. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because that's my strength. I have a weakness. That needs filled. I'm, an, I'm a two in follow through on a scale of one to 10. I need to hire somebody who's between an eight and a 10 in follow through to fill in my weaknesses. And what's cool is Colby actually tells you who you're supposed to hire. It's even cooler. So we have them take the Colby. And then the second thing we have them take is uh, appreciation languages in the workplace. This is based on the five love languages, if you're familiar with that. Basically, it's like, I want to know if this is a person who wants me to spend time with them, if they like gifts, um, you know, how, how can I say thank you to them? Because there's certain appreciation languages that take more resources and I might not want to hire that person just because I can't give them what they need to feel appreciated. Yeah. So if they, if they require lots of time and, um, words of affirmation, um, for every task that they do, that's, typically not a good fit for our agency yep. because we operate at such a high volume and capacity that it's difficult for the, those needs to be met. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. It, you you kind of have to be okay with occasion. You, you need to go outside of work to get your love tank filled and then come to work and pour out into your clients and your coworkers mistake. Our last mistake, mistake number four, was that we failed to include the team in the hiring process. Now I think this, I probably should have started with this because I think this is our secret sauce. You agree with that, Eric? It, I have to be honest. It's been one of the most, I think, inspiring to the team things we've done. So I think if anything, if it's not going to benefit in the hiring, which I think it does, but if it didn't per se, it's very valuable for your team to be a part of hiring. Helps with the esprit de corps. The, we actually have completely – it's it's something I've never heard anybody else do. The candidate, if they – do good on the phone interview, face-to-face, all the assessments come back good. The last step in our hiring process is they sit down with our entire team Team. without me present, without the boss present, and they have a team interview that lasts about an hour. Now, this is important because now the team gets a feel for this person. Now, they have to work for me, but I'm not going to be spending 40 hours with them like the people in the office will. So they're able to establish, do we like this person that we could spend 40 hours a week with them? More importantly, the candidate gets to meet the team because if they if they walk away from that hour of interview, they're like, those people are freaking weird. They're crazy. I don't want to work there. That's. Yeah. I want to know that now, not when the f- first week when you start and you realize that you don't like the people you're working with. And the only way that we hire is if it's unanimous. Yep. Everybody has to agree that this is the right person and yep. then we'll pull the trigger. Yep. So I need everyone to vote yes. If I get any dissenting voices, um, obviously if it was something ridiculous, maybe I wouldn't listen to it, but I've never had it. I've never had a ridiculous response. It's always been very reasonable in the way that people People respond. So our process today, we get the we get the resume and all the information via wise hire. We request a disc from those people. The people who take the disc and are a good fit, get a phone interview, they move to a face to face, they take a Colby assessment and the appreciation languages in the workplace, and then they do a team interview with the it requires a unanimous vote before they're offered a job. And that is how you hire rock stars. You will catch any of the issues that you may have with the candidate in that process. As far as I know, it's the most thorough hiring process for small businesses that I've ever seen. Yep. I think it's very, very good process that we've created. And this is going to be beneficial for all of our listeners to know what we do. Like Luke said, message us at Facebook on Facebook at the Marketing Agency. 
and Luke will be able to give this information to you if you need it again. Yep, I'll share with you the exact phone interview that I do, and uh, if you need some job descriptions, I probably can point you in the right place also. So you know what? There's going to be employees that don't work out sometimes, but hopefully sharing some of my mistakes can help you avoid those pitfalls and hire a team of rock stars. So if you have questions, message me. I love to talk about this stuff. And as always, you can like us on Facebook and Instagram at The Martigan Agency. Thanks, and we'll see you next time on Be Insured.